Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Clemens, and it is once again time for a psychology flip. Woo! We're flipping. Oh, somebody's flipping. Alrighty, guys, so today what we're going to talk about is abnormal psychology. And um, our little doodad that's going to tell us when we need to write is this nifty animation. Why did I choose this animation? Because it goes really well with the the PowerPoint background. Why did I choose this PowerPoint background? Because I like purple and I think it's pretty. Why anything else? No one knows. <laughs> Alright guys, so let's get talking. So um, if we were in class together, I would say to you, all right, what is mental illness? And to take a second and to actually write down five characteristics of somebody who's mentally ill. And when I've done this in the past, it's really interesting um, what I come up with um, that people write because <laughs> they're sort of scary things that people write. Um, they'll say, oh, they're crazy. They see things. They hear things. They're violent. They're angry. They're depressed. And they're all very like negative kinds of things. And then when I say, well, what is normal? write down five things of, you know, characteristics of somebody who's normal and they're like, oh, happy and they have friends and, you know, like they're married and they're living a great life. And what that always kind of tends to tell me is, oh, so you think mentally ill people, like somebody who's depressed can't, you know, be happy sometimes, they can't be married, they can't have children, they can't have a good life. and. Um, sometimes we actually get into discussions and we say, well, who is normal? There is no normal. But I do want you to kind of take a minute and think about your automatic sort of reactions to that. Um, because we really do, you know, and it's not just in the United States, you know, it's, it's really worldwide. Um, a very negative um, view of what mental illness is. And, um, you know, if you're getting treated for it, there must be something wrong. And, um, and it's, it's a, a really interesting conversation to have. Okay, so since we are talking about this, let's define mental illness. So, guys, don't go crazy. You're just writing the top one, all right? Just the top one. I can tell that you're listening if you only write the top one. <laughs> um, so our sort of fancy slash schmancy definition is... Um, any disease in the mind, the psychological state of someone who has emotional or behavioral problems serious enough to require psychiatric invention, invent, ugh, intervention. Um, so yeah, if you have a phobia and it's impacting your life, there you go. All right, you've you've got you've got an illness now. It's the same thing, guys. Just like a physical illness, like yeah, you know uh, we probably all have to some extent some sort of you know illness like if you have allergies right now we're not saying like oh r.i.p you have allergies <laughs> um or if you have a cold we're not like we need to put you in the hospital and you need to stay there so you know there's a lot of people that have you know there are just things that they're maybe a little bit weird about you know i had a kid that you know um is 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 uh, phobic of butterflies that doesn't mean that you know we need to lock her up or that there's anything majorly wrong with her um there's uh this uh this other definition here psychological pattern or um, anomaly potentially reflected in behavior that is generally associated with distress or disability so usually we know that something's wrong when you're in distress it's the same sort of thing like you know you break your arm you're in distress you're in pain we you know we can actually see that there's something going on um, which is not considered part of normal development in a person's culture so remember you know mental illness um, is like a cultural thing what's mentally ill here might not be mentally ill elsewhere um, mental disorders are generally um, defined by a combination of how a person feels, acts, thinks, or perceives. Okay, so what is normal? <laughs> well, it's kind of hard to decide what is normal. And so what we're going to talk about is a couple of the different models or methods that are used to decide what's normal. So our first one is this thing called the statistical model. That's basically you look at like what the majority of people do. So again, that's obviously going to differ, you know, based on population. So, you know, if I wear, 
I don't know, you know, if I wear white to a wedding, you know, here, people will be like, well, you're taking away from the bride. Like, you must be narcissistic. Whereas, you know, if I go to India and I wear white, well, that's fine because the bride is wearing something very brightly colored that is not white. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, if you look at the statistical model, so... You know, if it's winter and it's snowy out and, you know, we have that kid and there's always that kid in school that's wearing shorts, like, okay, so statistically, people aren't wearing shorts, it's winter, it's cold, does that make that kid men mentally ill? It might make them unique, but statistics doesn't work, is basically what I'm saying. Um, then there's societal expectations that, you know, sort of conformity. And so um, we've gotten into a big discussion. Um, one of my favorite students in the past was um, was a goth. And she, oh my God, <laughs> like, <laughs> she was just so awesome, so funny. Um, I liked her sarcasm, as you might imagine. And um, so was she not normal because she was a goth? Like, no, she was actually really well adjusted. She had a ton of friends. She actually did a ton of after school activities. It was kind of, it was very antithetical of what you would normally think of a goth. And she just was a, a happy person. Like, does that mean she's not normal? Uh, we actually had a discussion one semester where people really asserted she was not, but. Um, here's where we get into you know, what psychology really um, uses to judge. The consensus of opinion of experts, where basically psychologists come together and they decide what's normal, which would make sense that you would have an expert. So it's not like you and me and, you know, our friends that are saying, oh yeah, like, yeah, you know, we're all looking at somebody and we're like, yeah, that dude's sick. Like, no, it's experts that actually, you know, have studied the field and know what the deal is. This is also, um, this is actually something that psychologists rely on, is, um, is if the person knows that something's not right, if they admit that there's some sort of problem. So, um, you know, I've told you guys before about my phobia of bridges. I'm saying I have a phobia of bridges. Bridges make me really uncomfortable. So I'm the subject. I have discomfort. There's a problem. Um, social or vocational incapacity, your ability to function at, um, in either social or work defined roles. So social would be, you know, that you can't go, um, you can't leave the house or you're um, afraid to interact with other people. I, I had a student one time who um, was so, she just thought that everyone was looking at her in school because she thought she blushed really um, noticeably. So it made her really, diff you know, have a hard time going to school. Um, so that that would be that. Or work that you just, you can't hold down a job that you can't, um, and so not, not you can't hold down a job because you're lazy, but like, you know, that, that, that the stress of it is, is too much for you or you have a hard time um, working with other people. This is definitely a huge one, and we're going to talk about this with a couple of our disorders. Misinterpretation of reality that you're out of touch with or distorting what's real. So this would be, um, you know, definitely like things like hallucinations, um, definitely things like um, <clears throat> uh, paranoia or, um, you know, just um, delusions, things along those lines. And then immaturity. And so we're not like, all right, if I'm looking at my high school class and like somebody farts because somebody always will um, and everyone like laughs or says like, ooh, who did that or whatever, like, you know, like, does that mean like, oh, you're immature, so you're mentally ill? No, <laughs> we're talking about well below the degree of what's expected. Um, so, you know, it would be like, you know, the five-year-old kid that you know goes back to wetting the bed when um a, a new baby is born or you know the classic kind of midlife crisis where you know the bald husband and father of four you know all of a sudden you know gets a convertible and you know has an affair or something i don't know all right so then there's different models for treatment as well um so um, I don't know if you guys have a guess as to what 
this this treatment is right here. It's electroshock therapy. Um, I recommend really awesome movie to watch this one flew over the cuckoo's nest with Jack Nicholson, young Jack Nicholson of the 70s. Um, so then there's medical. Um, so the person that you would see for this would be a psychiatrist, psychiatrist. Um, and so they're going to look at a more biological kind of treatment. So they're going to, they want to know what the symptoms are. They want to diagnose it. They want to find out what was going on. They think that it's usually biological things. They want to give the treatment. Um, and, and that's kind of their thing. They are not therapy people. Psychiatrists are not generally are not therapy people. And so because they're looking for biological causes, they're saying, all right, is there a chemical imbalance in the brain? Is that's what's causing, you know, your depression? Um, you know, is there some sort of infection? Is there a genetic aspect, you know, like, um, you know, runs in the family? Um, was there some sort of brain damage that happened? So they're definitely very, very, very biological. And so their treatments are going to be biological too. Um, you know, today, obviously, psychosurgery, like a frontal lobotomy, again, one flu or cuckoo's ass, baby, um, you know, is not very common. Electroshock therapy um, is really, it's, it's done now for different things than it used to be done for, and again, it's not as common, or drugs, and that's the, the most common one. You know, like, oh, you're depressed, you take Prozac. All right, um, psychological treatment is where you're going to go and have therapy. And so they're going to have a different kind of point of view. So they're going to say, oh, there's something going on with your parents. And yes, your your mom gets blamed a little bit more because we still think of the, the mom as the, the, the nurturer. Some sort of psychological trauma, um, you know, you were abused or something, um, really pathological relationships or stress. And then there's all different schools of thought. Um, if you go on and take more psychology, you talk more about them. Um, you know, obviously we've mentioned Freud here in a, a bunch of different things. Um, but so his is psychoanalytic. Um, and you do need to know because that's just, you need to know Freud psychoanalytic. Um, but yeah, there, now there's neo-Freudian behavioralistic, which we're going to be talking about conditioning. Humanism, we talked about that with Maslow. All right, we're not going to talk about this very much. Um, so you're not writing this, but basically the, the book that the Bible of uh, psychology in America is the DSM. Now there's a new DSM, there's a DSM-6, so we're not going to really talk about this, but just to say that it's published by the APA and, you know, it's what is the, the sort of gold standard in, in America, you know, to say, oh, well, this is how we're going to diagnose you, this is how we're going to treat you, um, you know, for insurance coverage, all that stuff. All right, guys. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this and I promise we've got more abnormal psych to come.